Another radio host uh, on the KCBQ platform that we have is a guy named Michael Gaddis. I call him the triple threat. He's from Missouri, just like me. Uh, the show me state. This guy can show you uh, legal advice, mortgage advice, as he has a background there as well, and also a top producing realtor out of the North County Marketplace. Last time we had him on the program, we were out at the Crossings Golf Course interviewing a mayor. Uh, now we got him in here in studio giving you niche specific advice. Michael Gaddis, what do you got for us today? Thank you, Craig. One of the fastest growing areas of law is elder law. I heard statistics that state recently that 10,000 people every day turn age 62 or older. My special guest today is Philip Lindsley of the San Diego Elder Law Center. Thank you, Phil, for taking the time to come in today. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Well, Phil, you're one of only two certified elder law attorneys in San Diego County, is that correct? That's true, I wish there were more. Well, uh, what does it mean to be certified? Well, I think anytime we're reaching out and trying to need expertise in a field we don't understand, it's nice as a consumer to be able to uh, know how to judge something, who knows this and who doesn't. Uh, frankly, any, any attorney, as far as the state bar is concerned, can call themselves an elder law attorney, and many do. Uh, I know who does and who doesn't, and their knowledge uh, varies widely. So if a consumer wants to be sure that they're hiring somebody that actually knows what they should know to advise them correctly, it's always smart to look to certifications. And in the law, the State Bar of California does have some certifications, uh, and elder law is one of them. So if they look for a certified elder law attorney, they know that person has passed the uh, testing and the experience levels and actually knows what they should know. Well, your firm does estate planning and elder law. What exactly is elder law and, and what, what kind of things does it encompass? Well, in addition to estate planning, uh, an elder law attorney, the core of the specialization of elder law is the familiarity with public benefits programs, community resources, and also the issues posed uh, when somebody has a chronic condition, uh, health care condition, and may also somebody who's losing legal capacity and understanding. Um, that's the core of that profession. So the people that are likely to come to an elder law uh, attorney, frankly, are very often uh, baby boomer caregivers who are concerned about their parents. Want to uh, There's some disability, maybe some cognitive issues, some dementia. They want to make sure their plans are correct for that. And the other common group are families with people with d disabilities or developmental disabilities. Again, the core is the familiarity with benefits programs out there to make sure whatever financial or estate planning is doing doesn't interfere with the eligibility for the programs that can also offer assistance. So what I'm hearing is that elder law doesn't necessarily mean elderly people are your clients per se. What it means is that this particular area of law applies to everyone who has loved ones that are growing old. Yes, growing old or disabled. And frankly, I'm, most of the time, my right, clients come to me via the caregivers, and the, uh, the caregivers are ages who are concerned about their parents. Depending on their capacity uh, to do the things that need to be done, those parents may end up being my clients. Sometimes they no longer really have the capacity to do that, and I'm representing the uh, family members uh, directly. Well, let's move on to a question about Medi-Cal. What exactly is Medi-Cal, and why is planning so important? Well, the program I find myself usually wanting to talk about is the long-term care Medi-Cal program because it's unique uh, from all the other Medi-Cal programs in that it has some solid middle-class benefits written into the program that don't exist for the others. Uh, there are no income tests. This is a program that can pay for extended care in long-term, uh, in skilled nursing after Medicare runs out and Medicare will run out quickly. Uh, in that environment, and people will find that they're having to private pay seven, eight thousand dollars a month. This program can step in, can pay for an unlimited period of time, and can pay up to the full cost. There are thousands of people who would qualify for this program because the eligibility rules are different, and they have no idea, and they're private paying and spending down unnecessarily. So that's the program. There are some incredible benefits in that program, and particularly if there's a spouse they have in this program, also unique to that Medi-Cal program, spousal protection rules to make sure that the assets of that spouse are protected. So by caring for dad, mom doesn't end up a pauper.
Well, I wanted to uh, ask you a question about something that's very specific to what I do. Um, in my mortgage company, I help people with reverse mortgages a lot, and I hear a lot of people that are, might, that are concerned about the potential impact that a reverse mortgage might have on Medi-Cal or Social Security benefits. What, what is the situation with that? Properly handled, a reverse mortgage should not have any impact at all on either eligibility for Medi-Cal or supplemental security income, which is a core program for aged, blind, and disabled in this country. Um, neither of these programs count credit lines uh, in a reverse mortgage as an available asset, so it's not going to interfere with eligibility. The one potential problem is for people who would have a reverse mortgage and let's say they have the ability now to go and draw $30,000 out of their house, who would go and do that in one lump sum and transfer that to their bank account or their brokerage account and take possession of it. At that point, it can be a problem in public benefits qualifications. But that you don't need to do that. Um, these reverse mortgages, if people take them as a line of credit, just give a checkbook so they can access that when they need that. Use those checks to write uh, for caregiving assistance at home to help mom and dad stay in home. Uh, directly pay for these things that should never cause any problems. And in fact, is a great tool uh, if people can, with some assistance, stay in the home longer than they otherwise would. And the equity in the home is the only real way to, to get that. Uh, they're a great tool. Well, I want to be honest with you, Phil. I have like pages and pages of questions that I wanted to ask you, but we're out of time. So anybody who wants to ask you, you know, maybe contact you about your, you know, what your service is, where would they do that at? Yeah, I don't know if we have a graphic, but if we don't, uh, sandiegoelderlaw.com. Uh, there's a lot of information. Our phone number is 619-235-4357. We're happy to do snapshot interviews with people and see where they are, particularly people at the early stages maybe of a diagnosis uh, uh, or disability, and we can get all the tools in the toolbox up front. Most of what I do is in crisis, uh, and there are things we can do, but if people can come in earlier, uh, we can make sure that uh, we have uh, more options for them. Well, thanks a lot, Phil, for coming in. I really appreciate it. I know one of your associates is going to be on my radio show in a couple of weeks on KCBQ. So thanks a lot, Craig. Back to you. All right, gentlemen, thanks. Great stuff, great information. If you want to get more information from these guys, we flash their websites on the screen. And i got to remind you, you can also visit me online, craigsewing.com. That's where you can follow the show on social media. You can ask any questions through our contact form. Make sure you do that. All right, coming up next, we're going to be bringing in one of our heroes, John Reeves. Uh, this guy is a retired Marine captain. Uh, he is now the operator of Reef Point Real Estate. The guy does over 100 transactions a year serving those who have served our country. It is an amazing success story of entrepreneurship uh, from one of our brave heroes that served in our military. Stick around. You're going to hear an awesome story from John Reeves and much, much more on the American dream.